Attention. Large amounts of controlled substances have been found aboard your vessel. It seems like security discovered a large amount of controlled substance on my Hall A. Well, that is absolutely true. Hello my fellow citizens and welcome back to another video. This time I want to talk about this little cargo hauler and why is Hull A perfect for solo salvage cargo runners involved in a dark side of the law. Because we all know that dark side is where the money waits to be picked up and transferred to salvage yards or no questions asked terminals. With personal 30k salvage contracts as gold mine when it comes to earning money in Star Citizen, you may ask which ship is best to use for these contracts. In my opinion, MISC Hull A ship with 64 SU of cargo space is more than enough for solo running these contracts which will bring you a lot of money every time you take them. Yes, every time. Let me remind you or introduce you to these contracts in case you are a new player in Star Citizen or joined lately and still trying to discover all possibilities on how to earn money for all that gear and ships in game that you wanna try. All you need to do is to watch this video and learn about personal 30k salvage contracts. I have also checked this in current 320 PTU patch and these contracts are still very very profitable. I will show you how Hull A is even more fun to play with introduction of newly 16, 24 and 32 SCU cargo boxes in 320 patch. You will also see how I equip my Hull A to be more functional for his role in this job. The size of Hull A is a big advantage since these contracts will take their place in Yella amongst the Asteroids and Hurston within a lot of scrap flying around your ship while you are transferring your cargo. Navigating through the asteroid field and space scrap is way easier with smaller ship than with for example C2 Starlifter, Freelancer Max, Star Runner or any other bigger ship that you may have. Let's not forget that this little cargo hauler cost only 1.3 million and you can buy it in New Deal shop in Lorville. Now let me show you how I equip my ship and then you will see the biggest advantage of this little cargo ship. Firstly, I've changed my shields, power plant and quantum drive to stealth components since I want for my ship to be as stealthy as possible. Hull A is not a ship with firepower good enough to engage in any kind of combat, so that is why I choose stealth components since I want to see my enemy before he sees me so that I have enough time to quantum out to safety with my cargo. Regarding your personal equipment, all you need is water, med pens, oxy pens, some food and most important, a multi-tool with tractor beam attachment. I also like to carry a weapon just in case I need it. Ok, just like in my last two videos where I was explaining how important it is to unlock personal 30k salvage contracts because they will always give you insane profit, today I will again use the same contracts to prove how good this ship is for solo salvage cargo hunters like me. Usually you can be more effective if you play this with a friend where one man pulls out the boxes from salvage ship and other one is inside your ship and practically stacks the boxes. Something like this where I was testing these contracts around Hurston with my friend in Freelancer Max. Nice. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. That's it. Beautiful. I have all three. Nice, nice. But what if you want to play solo? Well, then this is the ship which is awesome for that because of one simple thing. First of all, it's small so you can park very close to the salvage ship. Next, watch how easy you can stack the boxes to your ship. See, you can save a lot of time with transferring and stacking from outside where on other ships you need to go to your ship's cargo hold and rearrange boxes again. Let me show you a few more examples with Hammerhead and Starfire. Then I will quickly jump to 3.20 PTU patch and show you new cool cargo box sizes and how can you stack them to this ship. This is a hammerhead filled with some high value cargo boxes and you can see how close I can park my ship without taking too much risk of colliding with hammerhead. 
As soon as this cargo elevator opens, you will again see how easy I can transfer the cargo to my ship's cargo grid. As you may see, simple and fast. Later on you can easily rearrange boxes if needed, which is extremely important once 3.20 patch goes live. Stay with me and I will soon show you what I mean by that. Yet another example with Starfarer where we also have 4 boxes to pick up. I will position my ship's cargo grid in a way that I can easily transfer the boxes from Starfarer. As you see there is no need to go inside of a Starfarer and you can do everything from outside of a ship. With this technique and hull A ship you will be able to do these contracts within 5 minutes for each contract. You will earn around 120,000 of pure profit per contract. 10 contracts in less than 1 hour will get you enough money to buy hull A in game in case you don't have this ship. And now let's quickly jump to a 3.20 PTU patch where I want to show you the new 16, 24 and 32 SCU cargo boxes and finally a feature which we all need to make a proper decision which boxes to take or leave when we have limited amount of storage space. Ok so we are now in 3.20 PTU and this is again personal 30k salvage contract on Yella and this time with M2 Hercules so let's see what we have inside. Here you go, this is a 32 SCU cargo box and we can finally see what is inside of these boxes. Now every time when you use your tractor beam it tells you what's inside of the cargo box. Unfortunately 32 SCU boxes are too big for hull A cargo grid so let's check for other types like 16 and 24 SCU size. We have 8 SCU of maize. Let's see, can we take this box to Hull A cargo grid? And yes, no problem at all. Awesome. Let me check what else we have here since I want to make sure to take drug boxes only because they worth a lot more than standard cargo. Here we go. This is a 2 SCU cargo box with slam. So let's take this too. I will also take a Quantanium, which is not a drug but it's worth a lot of money and you can sell Quantanium on Grimhex. By the way, the biggest container that you can put on your uh, Hull A cargo grid is 16 SCU. Now let's rearrange all this a bit and like I have mentioned before, it is extremely valuable to know what's inside of the boxes so that you can replace more valuable cargo with less valuable one, in case you fill up your Hull A completely. And yeah, let me show you that these are the same personal 30k salvage contracts, just like ones in uh, current 3.19.1 patch and uh, as you can see they are still extremely profitable. Let's not forget that there was like 4 32 SCU boxes of slam in that M2 Hercule that I left behind since they don't fit to my whole A. Now I'm gonna show you another advantage of Hull A, especially after these cargo box size updates. Again for solo salvage cargo hunter. Imagine that you have a freelancer or freelancer max completely full with cargo and you came across on 3 or 4 24 SU size boxes full of maize. Of course that you would want to take them with you. Now what do you think how much time you need to rearrange boxes in full freelancer and take out less valuable cargo to replace them with maize? Yeah. With Hull A this is much easier task since you can easily access all the cargo boxes in your grid and replace them much much faster. Here you can clearly see what I'm talking about and why I think that beside all cargo ships Hull A is one of the best for these kind of jobs and missions where you need to be quick with uh, getting in, taking the cargo and get out fast to avoid pirates or security. In these cases ships with external cargo grid are really convenient for this job, especially the ones that can land on planets or moons with cargo on board. 
Tell me what you think about Hull A in general. Would you use this ship for shady jobs like these personal salvage contracts or would you rather use some other ships? Also, what do you think about new cargo box sizes? Please leave your answers in comment section since uh, I would really like to know what are you guys using in these situations. I hope today's video was informative and useful to you and if it is, then you know the drill. Please like the video, leave some comments and subscribe if you want to see more guides and videos about Star Citizen like this one. Thank you all for taking your time to watch my videos, feel free to ask me anything and I will answer the best that I can as soon as I can. Until the next one, stay safe in the verse and as always, may the force be with you.